I did my first Jason Jensen build. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Hey, what's up all you hip cats and groovy chicks? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for hanging out with me. All right, so I did my first Jason Jensen trains build. Uh, it's just a great little structure, a great kit. It's a fast eddy oil change and I did something totally different to it. I, I changed it up just a bit. Uh, I showed Jason some pictures of it uh, once I got very close to complete and he loved it. So I just wanted to do a video of me doing some different things to it and, and really just going through my process of it. I want to thank all the new people for showing up and the old people as well. Thank you. Hit the button, like, subscribe, comment, share the video, do whatever you want with it. Just, I don't know, interact. Let's check out the video and I'll see y'all at the end. And then I guess it'll be time for Christmas coming up, right? Anyway, video. Okay, so, here is the Jason Jensen kit. Fast Eddie oil change. This is his second kit. I have the first ones as well and definitely looking forward to the next one. Um, here are the parts. He done all the laser cutting and everything. So I'm really proud of Jason for uh, putting together and kicking off his uh, models and stuff that we've been talking about for a minute um, and I'm sure you've all been waiting as well for his kits um, instructions everything is, is solid man um, just like you expect any other kit to come in the mail and have all the pieces and so I changed some things and as you've just seen I changed the brick wall in the back there, it was supposed to be something else, but I changed it. And I finally got one of those uh, pounce wheels, I think that's how you pronounce it. And you add uh, little nail holes with it. I thought this thing was the best thing since sliced bread. Um, it's just a great little tool to add that detail in there like that. Um, and then here I am I think this is the wall that is very uh, deteriorated and just really weathered and beat up. So I'm actually taking chunks out of the wall so I can uh, further weather it and make it look uh, really distressed and, you know, just rotted, really. I love rotting stuff. I love making stuff look like it's been sitting somewhere for ages. Um, and here I'm just kind of cutting away at some of the clapboards at the bottom. You know, I mean, you kind of just look at reference and see, okay, you know, whether it's water or fire, something towards the bottom of the earth that is in contact with anything else over time is going to weather and get really bad. And then here's just a close up of, so you can see kind of what's happening with the wood and stuff and how I make it look really bad. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so here I have a steel brush. You can grab these from like, uh, uh, what's the name of the hardware store? Harbor Freights. And you just rub it across, you know, the wood, the clapboards. And you can see here where it's got some really great wood grain going that's just you adding that layer of detail just more and more layering of detail so it's not even just 
the fact of you layering it with the paints and oils and stuff it's even starting now your layer after layer so i started with the pounce wheel then i chipped away at different things and now i scrubbed it with the brush so that's what three layers of stuff that's already happened um, and you just keep layering it's all about layering and just taking your time and having fun <clears throat> And I've shown these before, and I mean, I, I can't say enough about how great these stains are. Um, one, they come in these cool looking whiskey bottles, right? But then the stain themselves are just um, excellent, excellent stains. Um, there's a couple others out there that I use, but those are by far, hands down, the best to me. And so I took some scrap wood and done some tests on this one. Um, and I think I ended up with that London fog plus the marine teak is what I used for this one. So I put the London fog first and then went back over it with that uh, teak uh, color. <clears throat> it's just a great combination for me for what I was wanting to do and wanting to show I think I added some black towards the bottoms at some point but um, and then it just layer after layer so I think here I just showed two layers but I've done quite a few layers of that uh, those stains and then here I'm uh, you know you could do this chipping paint technique many many ways um, I just used the paintbrush I, I had a very soft ratty looking paintbrush and I just dipped it in the blue and took some of the paint off so it's kind of like a dry brushing but not dry brushing and again just took my time with it <clears throat> my favorite technique is oils I love oils they're very forgiving um, just dabbing some oil on there and letting the uh, thinner do its business, you know, making sure I, I typically like to fade stuff out. And then this is the result. I think I went back in again and done some more as well for these, but I love oils. It's such a really great uh product to use for the stuff we do especially with modeling and, and then not just buildings you know cars trucks military stuff it, it's just a great uh, uh, tool to use and here I'm doing the brick wall for the back um, classic sponge technique it's gray and, and here the walls are somewhat complete um, I always go back and add powders at some point. I don't know if I recorded that or not. Um, the build wasn't taking long. I just would get into this zone and forget to record some stuff. So I went back in and added some more uh, speckles of mold with just some really dark black in the sponge technique. Um, <clears throat> here I added the trim around it um, I didn't paint this at all all that is just stain and dust and powders and stuff the only thing I painted was the blue that wraps around the building at the bottom but everything else is just the wood itself and stain um, I, I really wanted to show the texture of the wood more than the chipping paint on top of all that um, I felt like I put a lot of time into doing those textures and stuff, so I wanted to show that. <clears throat> Excuse me, I feel like I got a frog in my throat. Um, and so I put together the little sign that goes on top. Um, I had to paint each section and then glue the Eddie sign on top of it. And here I'm just cutting out the actual frame that holds that sign. I probably could have sped through this a little quicker. I'm not sure why I showed this part, but I, I think 
I wanted to show just a bit of it because these pieces are very delicate and with this kit and any other kit that you get you have to v cut that stuff out very easy you don't want to break those things um, <laughs> that's funny because I actually broke it purposely so it could be bent and leaning into this hole that I created which you'll see here shortly but overall you want to take care of uh, how you cut these things out um, if you're not going for a post-apocalyptic decrepit looking thing <laughs> like I was but yeah this is the frame this is the front of the frame and I'm just using uh, Gorilla Glue uh, wood glue if I'm not using that I'm using canopy glue um, they both dry clear I end up painting over a lot of the glue if you know to make it look like tar or something like that but other than that that's you know me putting this together <clears throat> and here I'm figuring out where I want this hole because I, I want um, on the right hand side if you see down below there's an open garage and I want the door there but I also know that I want to put a hole on that side so I got to figure out one how far to make that hole go down without disturbing the uh, open part of that garage so this is me just thinking through some stuff and just trying to figure out you know how far to make this hole and i think i made it work uh i, I just enjoyed problem solving if you will you know uh, in my mind this building had been sitting somewhere for a minute I want to say I, I was thinking I wanted squatters to be in this building as well and I may trick it out and add like uh, I don't know couches or something in there to make it look like someone's living in there but here, here's the uh, finished piece I added some <clears throat> moss or grassy type stuff on top uh, to make it further to make it look like it's been sitting out and you know not taken care of for the most part um, and there's that whole Again, this was just a really, really fun build, fun kit. I like the garage doors for whatever reason. Um, and this is probably my little favorite part of the build is this rotting hole that I added on that corner. Um, hats off to Jason for this, man. This is just a really good, good kit. Um, I'll have all this stuff linked below. And yeah, check out the stuff. Um, he's a good dude. Peace. And that was my take on Jason Jensen's um, Fast Eddie's oil change building. As you've seen, I did a few different things to it. The sign was a little tilted and the roof had a hole in it. Added a brick wall in the back. I just wanted to do something different to it, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. It was a fun kit, just a fun, solid kit that uh, Jason put together. Looking forward to his next one, and uh, I have two more of his kits that I need to do as well. They were the uh, very first ones, little uh, sheds or shacks or something like that, so I'll mess around with that. Um, I got four more structures I need to do myself for this MMR and it's coming up close so I'll be getting judged uh, January the 15th ish somewhere around there and uh, hopefully I'll have some video of that and we'll be able to show you kind of the process of what I'll be going through and then with the judges coming in looking at my work pretty excited I'm starting to get a little nervous and jittery 
with that said, I wanna thank all my Patreon folks. I love y'all, love the support. Um, just the support alone for me to be able to do this and bring this out to other people is mainly what that support is. And I, and I from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate it. So yeah, I think that's it. Check out the next video and uh, I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.